What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the Brown Gen. Today, this we're well, sorry, what am I saying? We're back for another winning Wednesdays. Sort of struggling here. A little later than our usual scheduled programming. It's 8 p.m. Eastern. We usually go live 7 p.m. Eastern, but I had a family commitment. It's actually one of my parents' birthdays, so I had to take care of that first. And now I'm back here to talk about everything else that's going on with DeFi Kingdoms. Before we get into it, and before we talk about and set the stage for everything that's going on, because there's a ton of variables. It's not just Druid72. There's so much more in play here. Let's get into it. And before we do that, make sure you hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and also make sure you check out DeFi Kingdoms if you haven't already. So in today's video, we're going to start talking about the domino effect that has been taking place over the last couple of days. So the first thing comes out of Canada, which ironically, I am Canadian, but this was one of the first flags that we had that inflation could be actually moving the other way. Sort of in Canada, they sort of raised this prospect of another rate hike. It actually spooked the US stock exchange and also the crypto market. And this is because on August 15th, yesterday, our annual inflation rate surged more than expected to 3.3% uh, as core measured I by the central bank remains suddenly high. And that is after they've raised interest rates all the way to 5.5% in Canada. So it was sort of something a little scary. And today the Fed, so this is for the US, they have also now said that they see upside risks to inflation and now they may have some more rate hikes. So this is concerning because you cannot forget at the end of the day, even though we're in DeFi kingdoms, we're investing in assets and assets are priced to the availability of the dollar. If the dollar availability is very high, then you end up having very high asset prices because the dollar's purchasing power is actually much smaller. So like, you know, something's worth $10 million, but in reality it's worth 3 million, but $10 million will get you a $3 million asset. That's sort of how you want to of course, kind of think about it. So when the Fed came out today and re released their minutes and said that they are seeing more rate hikes necessary in the future, unless conditions change, this is really bad news. And the really, and the reason this is really bad news is a lot of us were under the impression that the last rate hike that we had would be the last one for a while that we weren't expecting anymore. And now with future rate hikes coming up, people are like, wait a second, should I be bullish? Should I be buying assets yet? Or are asset prices due to come down even further? Uh, before we get into more, let's see who's in the chat. Um, we got Libra here who's saying, feels bad. I was selling into USDC daily, but now I've reached the what's the point point. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I, 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 I kind of feel that too. Like. I was selling into Crystal and then changing Crystal into AVAX for a while, then Crystal to Ethereum for a while, and then Crystal to USDC recently. And the USD amount, USDC amount is so small. Like even on my Gen Zero Summons, my profit has gotten destroyed. I may be making 200% or 100%, but I'm only putting in like a dollar or 80 cents sometimes, depending on the cost to rent nowadays. We got Zabu in the house. We got DFK DGen. Hey, how's it going? Good, thanks for coming. Nifty, I hit though. What's the point feeling yesterday? You know what? This is very important and I'm glad you guys mentioned it. This is the time-based capitulation because a lot of us, when we invested, we had a certain time horizon. And over the long term, as volatility goes down, it sort of beats that out of us. You know, we're like, we, we, we sort of feel like, well, is this ever going to like get better? Cause this has been going on for so long. I'm actually going to bring something up here as well, which is very important. And this is from Cointelegraph and Cointelegraph sort of said something that I think a lot of us have recognized, but really haven't verbalized. Also welcome Zelly. How's it going? Um, which is Bitcoin is hitting a record low volatility. If you look at the Bitcoin chart, the Bitcoin chart is somewhat flat, 
it's it's not the Bitcoin chart that we're used to, which swings wildly all the time. This Bitcoin chart has been this Bitcoin chart has been very very tame, jumping between twenty eight to twenty nine, twenty to thirty, thirty to thirty one, thirty one to thirty. No more wild swings, at least、uh, not yet, anyways. So this has caused a lot of concern because a lot of us have been expecting there to be sort of more of an impact and. You know, when you get into crypto, you talk about volatility, right? That's the number one thing. People think of crypto and they think of wild swings, and Bitcoin has done nothing but recently. Like you look here back in、um, March of this year, we went from twenty thousand and went all the way to twenty five thousand, and then hit twenty eight twenty or yeah twenty eight twenty nine thousand across a few weeks, dumped back down to twenty four. And went all the way up to thirty-one thousand in the course of a few weeks again. And since then, we've been trading range bound. And this is sort of rarely happens with this asset class.、Um, but yeah, going back to all this, all this has done is spooked the market because now people are like, "Hey, usually what happens is when there's the last rate hike, people are like, 'Okay, I want to beat everybody else into buying the assets because they're undervalued, and now they're going to multiply.'" Every time this happens, it's like hitting the reset button, and everyone runs all the way back to the start line. And now they're gonna wait for the flag to sort of be flagged, and then then they start running. So that's why a ton of people were selling off in the last couple of days. Now we can see that clearly in the crypto market in the last seven days, Bitcoin is down two point six percent, Ethereum two point four, BNB four point seven, XRP eight percent, Cardano eight, Dogecoin ten. Typically, what you'll see is Um, the bigger coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they only move like a few per a few percentage points, and then the alts, you know, not including Ethereum, of course, they seem seem to move a multiple, usually three to five x the same price movement. So a Bitcoin drop in, of two percent usually release、uh, re- results in a drop of ten percent in all coin. So let's look at Avalanche. Avalanche is down ten percent over the last week. Right, this is sort of not out of the ordinary. Litecoin is down 11 percent, Polygon down 9 percent,、um, and this is something that we come to expect. Which is why on my channel I tell you when remember when XRP pumped, it went from 50 cents to 90 or 80, 50 to 80 cents in like a day. I rotated all my XRP into Ethereum, and Ethereum has dropped so small compared to、uh, to Ripple, and now I'm actually considering loading up some more XRP bags. Because I like rinsing and repeating, right?、Um, Libra says I don't want to sound bearish. I see things improving, and sooner than later, I just feel like it's not worth the work to grind up pennies at present. That's exactly right.、Um, that I think that's what a lot of people feel like, right? Like,、um, I mean, it, it was hard to go from making twenty dollars on every quest, to like a few dollars to a few pennies, to actually losing on quests sometimes, and. This is where we really all have to thank Zellies and DFK Helper. They've done a lot of incredible work to help reduce the gas fees on chain to make quests profitable. And I know the team doesn't really like talking about it that much, but we've got to appreciate Zellies and the team because without them, you can't even imagine how much harder it would be. Like, like take away the automation aspect, but like the fact that these guys are super invested in supporting the ecosystem by finding solutions for us, like. If it didn't, it would make it even harder for those people to continue playing the game, right? That's just the reality of it.、Um, but totally feel what you're saying, Libra. Like at the end of the day, I like I found myself two days late on summoning with my Gen Zeros today. I didn't even care. What was the point? I was sitting there like,、eh, why does it matter? Like, I, like by doing this, I make like a couple bucks. Is this really worth it for me? Compare that to like. Maybe four or five months ago, where my Gen Z or Sammy days, I was making like ten, twenty, thirty dollars, right? And and now I'm making like next to nothing. So it's like just because hero values have depreciated a lot, and I've also noticed that there are less people buying in the tavern right now too. Like, I usually list heroes at the floor when I summon them, and they usually go away in the next twenty four hours. No one's been buying any of those heroes recently. You know, maybe it's sort of a coincidence, but I, I think more than likely 
there's just less volume around because people are starting to get a little more worried about the project. Of course, you know, that's, that's, that's human nature, right? That's what happens with all sort of price action. The other thing here is also, um, there's been sort of an announcement that the Bitcoin ETF is going to take longer to get approval. So, and you know, those of us who have been in crypto for a long time know this, but when the, the Bitcoin ETF got announced, most of us realized, Hey, this is not going to come overnight. It's going to take about a year or so to get this in fantastic move. But we have to wait a long time. And typically when the ETF comes out, what we've also noticed is Bitcoin price dumps. It's just like buy the rumor, sell the news. This kind of stuff always happens. What usually happens is you may get a slight run up right before the launch. And when the launch happens, you just see it deflate. And it's just something to consider because I know a lot of people are super excited about this. Look, I'm excited about Bitcoin ETF too for a different reason because it when it comes live, Bitcoin becomes more mainstream and long-term the adoption is going to be incredible. Now, my opinion here around Bitcoin, the longer I have to stack, the better, because this is probably one of the surest bets in like your life, not financial advice, of course, but compare that to like Jewel, which is dependent on a project or like even Ethereum, which has like a, I don't want to say unlimited supply, but Bitcoin has a limited supply. Tons of institutions are using it. Countries are adopting it as their national currency. This is something that's legit. And I think like the more time I have to accumulate Bitcoin, I'll be grateful for it because I just keep adding to it all the time. Right. That's just something I want to do. Um, for DeFi kingdoms and looking at DeFi kingdoms specifically, our biggest felt pressure is Druid 72. And it's funny because I had somebody who's sort of well known in the community for being wrong. And I'll say this right here. I'm not going to say their name, but you probably know who I'm talking about because I've quoted their tweets in the past. When I had said, Hey, this, this, this whale is selling in a way that makes me think that they're going to liquidate their entire account. This was back when Jewel was like 11.8 or 12 cents. And I said, Hey, I would recommend not touching or buying do jewel at all until the whale is completely out. This person came back and basically implied that I was fudding saying that, um, you know, you have no reason to believe they're going to sell the whole thing. That's not true. All this stuff. And even now they're like, well, they were telling me, well, if Jewel goes to five cents, it'll go to $20 so fast because what's going to happen is we just need a thousand five hundred people to buy. Like, I don't know how much jewel or whatever they were saying. And then all the circulating supply goes, that's not how it works. Like you have to make sure when you hear these things that like, there's some logic behind it. Like where's the demand coming from and who said people are going to buy the exact same amounts. That's not the case at all. Like, yes, people will be dip buying. People will be buying because they do think jewel is a great investment. I think jewel is a great investment too, as a speculative one, but I'm waiting for a good price. I'm also wanting to punish this whale. Thank you to everyone who sort of either listened to me or others who've said not to dip by because the whale has had to take less and less money for their jewel, which, uh, whereas if we had dip bought, they would have propped up the price of jewel for them. And then they would have got a way better selling price. And then the price would have still came down, but the whale would have made more money doing it. So we want to make sure we punish that fool, punish the whale. Yeah, that's right. Zelda's got a point on, punish the whale. We got bullish Broby in the house. Make sure you check out his channel if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, this whale now only has $3.2 million, $3.2 million jewel left. And if you look at his transactions, he recently quested or something. Cause I noticed he's got like some blue stem, some blue egg, a Shivas, Shivas rune, 69 DFK tears, 420 lantern eye. But this morning he was selling another 200 or this morning he sold like 50,000 joule, 50,000 joule, 50,000 joule, 100,000 joule. And he's been selling at a hundred thousand joule increments uh, for the last few days and withdrawing his money as well. So you can see this on the bank. Um, if you just check out his profile, but I have no inclination to say otherwise that this person will continue selling until they have zero joule. And like, literally it's like predicting, uh, I was telling, uh, someone this, it's like predicting eight o'clock when it's seven. It's so obvious. And as such, the price of jewel has come down significantly. Not a surprise. 
In fact, I believe we can see as far as four cents, maybe even lower, right? That brings us down here. I'm gonna draw the line right now. That's where is it extended horizontal line. Let's just draw one four cents and let's see if we get there. Okay, whatever. Okay, four cents. We'll see if we get there. Um, what's really important here, let's make a different color actually if we can. Do, 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 do. Red, red mark. Let's see if we get there, okay? Um, I don't want us to get there, obviously. I just think with the sale pressure and sort of the limited amount available, it's going to continue driving the price down, especially if people aren't buying. But hey, not a problem. Let's not forget the reason I'm showing this here is not because I'm not bullish on DeFi kingdoms. I think you can be bullish on something and ignore the price action in the short term. The price action has to do with somebody selling out. Nothing to do with people's confidence in DFK outside this one individual who we also have no idea if they're selling out for themselves or if they're selling out because they just don't uh, believe in DeFi kingdoms anymore. We don't know. Could be a family emergency, whatever. The re I'd like to think it's that way because why would you sell? Why would you hold all this time? Hold all the time when Jewel went all time highs and now sell now that it's all time lows. It doesn't make any sense. But hey, if somebody has a situation like that, I completely empathize and understand. Doesn't mean I'm going to let you get an easy way out on, on the DeFi Kingdoms ecosystem. But I think the team is doing everything right. I think in the long term, these will recover. Uh, I think that we have a lot of potential ahead of us. And if you want a great analogy, check out like Tesla stock. Tesla stock actually got destroyed. And, you know, maybe I'll bring it up on screen here. Put it up and bring it up. Just give me one second. So Tesla stock back in December. You can look here. This was once one of the one of the best traded stocks in the world. It went all the way from three hundred and thirteen dollars on September twenty two to a hundred dollars at the start of January twenty twenty three. And they're like, nothing happened to Tesla. There was no like car accident. There wasn't their autonomous driving failure. No, it was Elon Musk who had to sell a ton of shares to buy Twitter. And by doing that, people just wouldn't buy until he sold all his shares. Once he said he was done, look what happened after. The price of Tesla stock for those who were smart enough to buy it once that bottom signal was in, went all the way from 100 all the way to like 300 again. That's 3x in six months. Where do you get those kind of returns in the stock market on a company as obvious as Tesla? And this is sort of where I see the same thing potential with Jewel. Wait till it, we have the sort of evidence to see where that uh, whale is, right? We can see what their allocation is. Once they get low enough, consider buying them then. And if you want to buy it earlier than that because you're afraid that people will front run you, by all means, go ahead. But you have an idea of how much they have left. So maybe it's a game of chicken, or maybe you can even dollar cost average on the way down. It's not up to me to sort of tell you what to do here. Um, you know, and one of the things I, I do want to mention, uh, besides the make sure you hit the like button and share the video. Thank you, Nani, for uh, for saying that. We got to make sure we pump this out. Um, I don't do DeFi Kingdoms content only these days, so I want to make sure that. When I do these videos, they do come out and people do get to watch them and enjoy them because I make these videos for you guys. Most of the time I'm sharing like my intel and my secrets, uh, but I do it for the community because I want to see it grow. Uh, also, yeah, appreciate you saying that bullish Brovia. Um, you know, the number one thing I'm, I do with my content is I don't want to just cover the game features because everyone can do that. I want to talk about how you guys can be profitable long term because I think that I think there are so many ways to play the game and the easiest way, the way that requires me not to have to win in PVP and everything else is by being like the money manager and like sort of knowing what the right moves are financially in this game and setting myself up and others up uh, like that. So one such example actually is I had another Gen Zero that I sold. So I bought this Gen Zero on, let's zoom out, on the 19th of June. Where the hell is this? Okay, yeah, I bought on the 19th of June. Why is this going like this? Yeah, 19th of June for 70,000 crystal. Crystal was like two something cents back then, okay? Um, I then sold it for 138,000 crystal, and this was 
couple days ago, it says today, but a couple days ago, 138,000 crystal. And when you look at this, this is sort of my Gen Zero flip chart. So my first Gen Zero I bought on June 12th uh, from Baby Punch for 2100 US. Sold it about half a year later or eight, nine months later for 4720 a gain of 2,620 US, and this is after fees, right? 125% return on investment, fantastic. Uh, obviously, like the market recently has not fared so well, so like my last couple flips have only been a couple hundred bucks. I made 500 bucks on a Scala that I bought in December and sold in Feb, but the ones I bought in June, like June 19th and June 30th, I've sold for like about $200 profit. Still, I think worth it, and if you look at it, I made like 14%, on each basically something to consider because i think flipping hero nfts is the number one opportunity in this game buying them and reselling them to people who want them probably the most valuable thing and if you buy things that aren't inflationary like g gen zeros or i don't know land something like that you have a lot more potential yes it requires more capital but i'd rather do that and make 14 percent on a thousand than 20 percent on like two dollars or what I'm doing with my Gen Zeros, 200% on a dollar. Yay, like, you know, what's the point? Like, so, so, so these are the things you should look out for because there will be deals for Gen Zeros. I still believe that Gen Zeros are like the best asset that you can own in the game. I have now sold one more. So with the two that I sold in June, I'm now sitting, or sorry, two that I sold recently, I'm now sitting with six Genesis Heroes. Still a lot. And I'm probably going to buy some more and flip them again. That's sort of my plan. And as I hold them, I just summon and sort of sell what I make for profit. You can sort of see all that captured here in my spreadsheet. I'd make this live and free to, to view on my free public discord. You can see here, like my last eight heroes that I summoned haven't sold yet, but like, just take a look at all this, all the sales data, right? It's pretty incredible. Like, so if you want to check it out and you don't have a gen zero yet, you're wondering, is it worth it? You can, I have about 500 uh, summons worth of data in here between this, between uh, Crystal Veil and between Serendale 1.0, right? So something you can definitely check out. I put all of this up here for you guys for free. Um, I also think this is really funny. So this thing that our favorite Twitter user, Digital Slow Mad posted, playing TFK Duel be like, <laughs> it like reminds me of like the Dragon Ball Z movie, I guess. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, so just going back to like everything I was saying about, you know, the reason you're here, do you buy? Do you buy now or do you buy later? It really depends on your allocation to DeFi kingdoms. Take a look at your account. Um, we had a conversation in the price discussion Discord channel today and people were talking about why people get emotional, right? And the reality is like everyone will get emotional. It just depends on what price at, ev at every price point, somebody becomes emotional. Even Elon Musk, if you told Elon Musk, like to do a bet for a dollar, whatever, not worth his time, hundred bucks, not worth his time, $10,000, maybe worth his time. Who knows? A million dollars. You got his interest. A billion dollars. He's kind of hesitant. $1 trillion. Do you think Elon Musk could bet $1 trillion more than he has or something like something that would be like a significant part of his wealth? Like, let's say he was worth only 1 trillion. He's worth less than that. Right. But let's say he was worth a trillion. All of a sudden you take the richest person in the world and now they're uncomfortable. And that's how it works with investments. It all is relative. So somebody who's got a small portfolio would a smaller, a smaller position would make them feel more uncomfortable. And that's just sort of how you have to scale your size. 
if you have a small portfolio or if you don't have much allocation in DFK and you'd be comfortable taking on a bit more risk, because remember it's speculative, then maybe you can dip by, maybe you can buy earlier and keep buying on the way down. If you're somebody who's like, Hey, honestly, I can take it or leave it here with DeFi kingdoms. And like, I'm not in a rush. I only have a limited amount of funds. I don't want to buy it again. Then what I would tell you is, Hey, just wait until this whip is done selling. And even if that means that they stop selling and like today's the last day they sell and the price just goes up all of a sudden, Hey, better that than you risk losing the money that you had. So that's sort of the approach I would get. Dollar cost average is a great approach. So like maybe you can look at this and go, okay, let's say I have a hundred dollars to invest in Jewel. Maybe I say, okay, when it hits eight cents, I'll buy 10%, $10. Jewel. When it hits seven cents, I will buy $20 or 20% in Jewel. And then you sort of follow that down, right? That's an approach you can take. And let's not forget, you know, DeFi, DFK duels is back. So we're going to see a ton more transactions on chain. Unfortunately, I think that's probably going to result in higher gas fees and sort of a little bit of slowdown, but either way, it doesn't matter because we want people to have something to interact with on the system that is not just summoning. It was the moment like DFK duels was down. It was just summoning and hatching for the whole month. Right. And if you go to DFK foundry, you can sort of see like how inflation has taken a hold and you can see like the number of tokens being created too. Look, like, especially crystal, which I believe is nearing the hundred million mark, which is completely absurd. I think it was at 66 million, like a month and a half, two months ago, but that's the emission schedule that's out there for jewel. As I said, I expect us to potentially hit four cents, maybe even lower before this whale is completed. But if you save your money and you say, Hey, I want to have some dry powder ready to buy some jewel. I can get an incredible deal, a deal that like, obviously there's some risk in it, right? Because technically the project can go to zero. I'm not saying that there's a world where this doesn't happen. I don't think it's likely. I think that what the team has done sort of in the, uh, in the summer of last year, that was likely the hardest time and they came out the other side. And since then there hasn't been any issues, right? People will say, and there was a guy on my Twitter saying that they're begging Clayton for money. No, they were supposed to get money from Clayton. I don't think they got it because the people who were working for Clayton, who were in charge of getting that for them had left the organization. So they never got their, they got, they never got their grant. I believe that's what happened. So how's that begging? They're just making sure they get their fair share. On top of that, you know, myself, Grady, Christian, we all know that they were approached by other chains who showed interest in like. So it's not like DeFi Kingdoms does not have possible suitors who are looking for them to come and give them a realm. It's just not a team, it's just not a team priority right now, right? The team is focusing on rolling out PVP and PVP, PVE exceptionally. And that's why I say like, don't worry about the price action. The price action only matters if you're heavily invested or you want to sort of look and buy some jewel. And like I said, for that dollar cost average, if you don't want to wait or wait, monitor the whale wallet. Once they hit zero, build your bag. That's probably what I'm doing because I already have a significant investment in DeFi kingdoms through my Genesis heroes, my mythic heroes, my mythic pets, and um, a bunch of lock jewel I already have. That's sort of the approach I have. Um, I would love to sort of hear what all of your thoughts are because at the end of the day, like, you know, you just hear me monologuing for like 28 or 30 minutes. The whole goal here is really to get your feedback, to get your thoughts, uh, hear what the community has to say. I would love to hear that. You can post that in the chat, or if you're watching later in the comments below, that'd be awesome. Don't forget, follow me on Instagram and YouTube, the Brown gen, subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, follow me on Twitter. And until next time, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.